what do you secretly judge people for? Have fun watching and be sure to write in the comments what you think about these stories. Maybe you have encountered similar. Story 1. Parents with toddlers that calmly do what they were doing while the kid is on the floor crying. E.g. Enjoying their dinner at a restaurant while the kid is screaming on the floor. Fast forward a couple of years. And now that we have a toddler of our own, we enjoy the food no matter what the little devil does. Story 2. Their cleanliness. I automatically have zero respect or interest for someone who smells like a sack full of assholes rolled in onions. Soap is cheap. Water is literally outside if you absolutely must. And deodorant can be had as cheaply as dollar two slash eight Oz stick, depending where you buy it from. I have a neurological disorder that unfortunately makes me incredibly sensitive to smell, so what smells like, A, good enough, to most people smells like death to me. Story 3. People going on and on in a conversation about themselves and every detail of their experiences, completely oblivious to taking up someone's time or letting them share, too. I find a lot of older people like to do this. I'm happy to have a conversation with practically anyone, but I don't need to know the diet of the assistant to the boss you worked for 20 years ago. Story 4. Insane to me that so many people are comfortable posting photos of themselves from an ER or hospital bed. We get it. You want attention for your suffering. But bro, this is maybe one of your most vulnerable moments in life. Perhaps don't reframe it to yourself as an opportunity for likes and comments. Story 5. Southwest Airlines provide open seating not assigned. Cool. Great, but I cannot stand when they let everyone sit up at once. It should go row by row, or you risk having an asshole cut in front of you when you have been waiting to leave. Or maybe do your job and ask if there is other people who have connecting flights and have them leave upon arrival first. One time we landed, and the arrival time was very delayed. We had to tell people we need to leave right now so we don't miss our connecting flight. And the flight attendant neglected to mention this, but was aware of connecting flights. Please, save us the embarrassment of asking people and do your damn jobs. Have a sense of direction and communication. It's not that hard. The boarding and offboarding process will be much smoother. Story 6. Secretly, silly things like drinking alcohol. I know it's shallow, I'm aware, but I have this reflex of thinking less of people by default for consuming it. I keep it to myself because I know it's wrong, though, especially when I'm a hypocrite that is bound to also have problems with my liver because of the amount of sugar I eat. Story 7. People that are ugly to service workers. I was 22 years old working as a waiter in a high-end restaurant that served a yacht club, condominium community, and was the place everyone went for special occasions, got hit on by a MILF that was a 10-10, and I took her up on it. She invited me to dinner at a high-end hotel restaurant, and she told me she had a room. She was super shitty to the waitress to the point that after we finished our dinner, I went to her and apologized and gave her a big tip. Then I left. No cell phones back in the day. She came into my restaurant a few days later and asked what happened. I told her the waitress was my friend, and I didn't like the way she talked to her. The waitress came to my restaurant about a week later with friends to drink in the bar. We hit it off and remained friends for a few years. Story 8. Guys with beards, but they shave their whole underjaw, so it's just like a drawing of a beard on the front of their face. Think George Lucas or Anthony Mackie's Falcon at the end of Avengers. End game. Shockingly common and gives you a double chin when you look down, even if you don't have one. Neck should be shaved, but anything head should have beard on it if you're going to grow one. Story 9. Their judgment upon me and others. Every individual has a story. Pull the plank out of your eye before the speck from mine. Keep a woman or mother in the dark back her eye to a corner. She will yell, scream, cry as intuitive notions set in. So when one is yelling at the police about how one killed my son as Hamas didn't exist, Israel is to take a stand. The fact the whole lot of this place knows what's going on. The FAT that they all know as it blasted everywhere. One thing my son's father taught me I don't fucking care. Story 10. Being consistently late. It's one thing to be a couple minutes late to a social event every so often due to like traffic or something. But when you're consistently late to those events or late to business or other professional engagements, like appointments with your accountant or lawyer or something, that's just rude. Story 11. Being slobs and keeping their living space like a pigsty. Trash all over the floor and furniture. Filthy kitchen. A week's worth of unwashed dishes in the sink. and overflow all over the counters. Boxes everywhere that might be empty or still containing junk that they clearly don't need. Piles of miscellaneous junk out in their yard. And on the extreme side, hoarding. OMG, I can't stand it. Story 12. People that constantly have a giant Starbucks, McD's, Tim Hortons, etc. blended sugar bomb in their hand. And to be perfectly honest, fat people. 
I know I'm terrible, but it's not that hard to find out what the elements of a healthy lifestyle are. Making good decisions instead of those that give you short-term pleasure but long-term problems shouldn't be that hard if you truly care about your well-being. Story 13. When parents in the malls let their children run around and misbehave without making an effort to keep them in line, I understand if you are trying to keep your child in line and they misbehave anyway. But if you are not doing anything to stop your child from misbehaving, I will be silently judging you and will regard the brat the child will become as my daily dose of birth control. Story 14. It all comes down to a lack of self-awareness, really. I'm a highly self-conscious person, to unhealthy degrees, I'll admit, and I care about a lot of little things that bother no one else. While I know that my hyper-awareness is unreasonable and unhealthy, I can't help but be bothered when other people display too little self-awareness for my standards. It includes reasonable things, being in the way, chewing loudly, whatever, but also things that I know I really shouldn't care about. It's all a projection of my own issues. Story 15. How long can a list be? Close talkers. Those annoyingly in your face. Chatty Klingon types when you've really got to pee. Stopping by at 6.43 a.m. and ringing your doorbell repeatedly because as they love to chirpily exclaim, I'm always up this early. Yeah, well I'm not. Showing up at dinner time, eating, and then making what you think are subtle digs like, your house used to always be so spotless. What happened? Calling at the most inopportune times but refusing to take big hints or even bluntly worded, now is not a good time to talk, but refusing to stop talking, keeping us from hanging up. People who turn on very loud weed blowers at 7.03 a.m. and spend three and a half hours blowing leaves off a lawn that's the size of a postage stamp. People who cut you off at the pump at a gas station and go into slow-mo, walking over to the cashier, chatting them up, paying. Ops, try this card instead returning to the pump as slowly as is humanly possible, in sloth speed, taking the nozzle out, inserting it in the spout, then sitting in their car a while, after the pump has already stopped, then leisurely getting out, stretching, yawning, before putting the nozzle back, getting back in your car, starting it, and leaving. People in crowded parking lots, who see someone looking for a space, finally seeing someone who's leaving, so they can get that spot. Driver of the parked car, deciding that they must make a cell call, now, chatting in a loud voice, laughing maniacally, making overly loudly exclamations, as if everyone else within earshot wants to hear their boring convo with their cousin. So if I seem a tad impatient, that's fair enough. But seriously, who doesn't get a bit annoyed with some of the same issues? Story 16. Parents who don't parent their kids. I work in a salon. I shouldn't have to tell your kid to turn their iPad down or get off of salon equipment. Brewery workers shouldn't have to babysit your kids while you sit and drink and act oblivious to the fact that they are tearing the place apart. Teachers shouldn't have to fight with you to get you on board with your child's academic performance or behavior in the classroom. The list goes on and on. The parents are worse than the kids by a mile. Story 17. How people act around others, especially kids, revealing things that even regardless if they know that shouldn't be, if they try to make people around them comfortable and general interest in others rather than paying half attention. Not talking about the people who just are introverted, more the people who are assholes. Had a girlfriend whose first reaction to kids near me was to try to impress me back in our school years. Made very harsh jokes that involved drug use and sex to mind you children. That day I broke up with her. It shows a lot about someone's character. Story 18. I don't try to judge people because I hate people judging me because of some dumb stuff. But... Working as an optician in a big European chain, it's hard to not judge people. Because there are certain cliches that are happening over and over and over and over again, like how most Turkish people always take the cheapest offer they can find, to a ridiculous degree. We give away good lenses for children, including an anti-glare and anti-scrath coating, which normally isn't paid by the health insurance, but we still gift these to kids and teens until 18, and even though it's free, we still had Turkish families trying to haggle and basically telling me to remove the coating and give them the difference in cash. Yeah, I don't judge people. But it's very hard not to remember this stuff when it happened over and over and over again. So, yeah, I see a Turkish family come into the store and my mind basically goes, oh no, not again. Oh, and Turkish people aren't the only ones like that. There are a few other things for different kinds of people that we opticians see as a cliche, but are true almost all of the time. Story 19. Standing very close behind me in line. Was in the TSA line returning home to USA from a layover in Dubai, maybe 75 PPL in front of me. And there was a really smelly Indian couple in front of me. No racism, just facts. The smelled like straight ass and onions. And I didn't want to be very close to them, so I stayed about three. 
four feet behind them. Mind you, I was still moving forward in the line, but maintaining a slight distance so my nose hairs didn't burn. There was a group of American black women behind me chit-chatting, and one of them just sidestepped around me with her luggage and cut in front of me. I just whispered, okay, and let her stand super close to the Indian couple and stepped back like one half step. One of the ladies in the group that was still behind me told her friend that I was in front of them, even though it was so extremely obvious. And the lady that cut me off sarcastically says, oh my bad, I thought we were supposed to move forward in lines and then got back behind me. Made me remember why I don't like Americans. Like, fine, have fun cutting me and smelling that rank onion ass, but don't be a bitch to the person who let you cut without saying anything. Fucking annoying and embarrassing. Story 20. Excusing their children's shitty behavior instead of correcting it. I've seen a 12-year-old boy stick his head under the door of a woman's bathroom stall, a 14-year-old call a 9-month pregnant woman fat, a kid around age 11 constantly playing the kazoo in Target, a kindergartner hitting a dog, an 8-year-old jumping on the front counter of an IHOP, and all of their parents just justified it with, they're just children, they don't know any better. Yeah, that's why you teach them and in some of those situations, they were definitely old enough to know better. Story 21. Not doing the research before making a large decision or commenting on a topic that has a certain knowledge threshold. I can understand wanting to learn from others or accidentally oversimplifying a concept, but how do you not have a little pause when faced with something unfamiliar and fail to go, I don't know much about this, so maybe I should try to make sense of it first before discussing slash installing slash eating slash condemning slash laughing at etc. It. Story 22. Whenever someone mentions that they can't don't eat something and someone responds by either trying to find a workaround, Say, oh man, I could never go without X, or suggest that they also have XYZ, but also say they like to be bad sometimes. It just reads as immature and insensitive to people's potential health conditions. I have a dairy allergy and my gut has a gun to my head. I'm not playing with cheat days. I can only imagine how insufferable it is for people with more serious conditions like celiacs. Story 23. This I don't secretly judge I hate, and it's obvious. I had a next door neighbor who we had take care of our place while my mom was in the hospital and I had to go with her, as nobody could take care of me, and I was 14, it was an emergency. But when we got back, they had destroyed our home, and apparently had parties there, stole stuff, like my old clothes, my father's old tools before he committed suicide, and lots of other stuff, like toys from when I was little, and other things, and they denied the fact that they even stole anything meanwhile their four-year-old, was at our place as they had us babysit, like we were just their maids, and left us to deal with her so she had one of my father's toys he gave me. We took it back. They said they have nothing else there. But we've seen the eight-year-old wearing my old clothes and the mom using my dad's stolen tools. Then we returned the cat, who we thought escaped, but she's her back outside a few minutes later. For a week, they didn't own the fact they abandoned her. Meanwhile, she had no food, no water, no shelter, begging to come in, and we were feeding her, giving her water. She was pregnant too, basically owning her. They still said it was their cat and not to call her Lily, but Milia, or something like that. And we refused as if you're not taking care of your pet. You can't tell anyone what to call them. We eventually were able to take her in. And she has a nice home at our place and has a litter of kittens, happy and healthy. But these people were outright mean, selfish, sociopaths, and they were eventually evicted. But Lord, that was a nightmare to deal with. Story 24. So many things. People annoy me in general. Family's out for a meal and the kids are all staring at iPads. See it constantly. The other day we went out for dinner. Family next to us was three adults, three young kids. All three kids had headphones on staring at iPads. Didn't speak a word to anyone or acknowledge anything but the fucking screens the whole time they were eating together. Not even a thank you to the waitress who brought their food. Just glued to whatever crap they were watching. I think it's shitty lazy parenting and it's so common these days. Lack of manners. Please and thank you is basic. If you can't muster either of those words when appropriate, I'm going to be judging the hell out of you and will presume you were dragged up, not brought up. People who don't honor cues. This is the height of British etiquette, and if you don't follow suit, you're a twat. It's like an unwritten official rule. Respect the cue. Story 25. First of all, let me say up front that I know this is petty. I judge people regarding their footwear. I can't explain why, but I instantly lose some respect for a man when I see him wearing sandals anywhere other than at the beach or at a pool. It particularly bothers me when I see a guy who doesn't bother clipping his toenails wearing sandals. It's also disconcerting to see a guy with a blackened toenail due to an injury that probably wouldn't have happened 
if he'd been wearing steel-toed boots, or at least shoes instead of sandals when he was doing whatever the hell caused his injury. I also don't like it when anyone wears flip-flops when they're not at the beach, the pool, or using a public shower. They are often an impediment to walking, the soles of the person's feet get absolutely filthy, and they make that annoying flip-flop sound for which they are so named when people walk around the office in them. Regarding women's shoes, I am of the firm belief that if you can't walk in them, then they aren't shoes. I remember driving on a quiet downtown street and seeing a woman walking barefoot while carrying her six-inch spike heels. If she was going to walk barefoot anyway, why lug around the heels? I should also point out that as a man who is only five, four inches tall, I am bothered, and perhaps insecure, about the idea of women no more than five, two inches wearing shoes that cause them to tower over me and look upon me as being too short, even though in reality I am taller than they are. Did I mention that I'm petty? I also wonder what people's objection is to wearing socks. And by socks, I mean something that at least rises above the level of the shoe. I was talking to a female friend of mine who was wearing what looked like fairly comfortable leather shoes, but she was complaining that they were scraping the back of her ankle, to which I replied, that's because you're not wearing socks, to which she replied, I am wearing socks. No doubt she was referring to those things that just barely cover the toes and heel of one's foot, but do not go anywhere near the ankle. Even those socks that just barely peek above the shoe would have solved her problem, but I guess fashion wins out over foot comfort once again. I also think Crocs are hideous. I understand that some people find them comfortable, and I can see why they would be practical for things like gardening, and I highly value practicality. I still think they're hideous, though. Many of you may wish to dress me down for the pettiness and what you may feel is the arbitrary nature of my opinions. I'm inclined to agree with you on that point, which is why, except for this forum, I don't share these opinions with anyone. I don't claim to be rational on this particular subject. TLDR I judge people based on my arbitrary and petty opinions about their footwear. Story 26. If they pay me back or at least acknowledge that they have a debt, whether it's for lunch, dinner, a drink, maybe you needed an extra dollar twenty for something last year, whatever. Some people really believe they don't have to return the gesture or they make excuses for not wanting to pay you back. I've found these people to be trashy as fuck and will judge them for all eternity. Nobody should have to ask, hey, can you pay me back? It's cliche. But if that's the cost to reveal the kind of person they are, then it's a small price to pay. Story 27. Making your self-diagnosis your whole personality. Being actively angry that people use products from your non-preferred manufacturer. Being over the top basic. I don't mean being plain or liking pumpkin spice or whatever. I mean being a 100% complete consumerist clone of the whole wavy bleach blonde influencer look with fashion and decor by Pinterest trademark and no obvious personality of your own. Up talk, although I'm often guilty myself. Basically, everything social media, now that I think about it. Maybe I should just delete this app. Story 28. I cannot stand the phrase, I was today years old. You are never today years old. You are whatever age you are today. I may be irrationally angry about this, but it's really annoying. It makes zero sense and makes people sound like an idiot. If you are 30 years old when you learned something, then you were 30 years old when you learned it. Story 29. Being willfully ignorant while at the same time wishing I could experience that bliss. This isn't to say I am a super intelligent know-it-all. I just pay attention and enjoy learning how the world works. That comes with a price for me not finding the wonder in things, while also being aware of many of the more worrying G things. Most people I know who don't concern themselves with that always seem more content but I can help but see that ignorance as something that holds society back. Story 30 people talking bad about others behind their back. I was going out with a guy and met with his mom for coffee when one of my friends shows up to drop off something. After she leaves, the mom asks me if she is single cause she would be great for her other son. I reply, he's dating Jessica and they are marrying. Ah, she goes like, you never know if she was talking bad about Jess behind her back. She definitely was about me. Whole fam was toxic. Story 31. People being inconsiderate. Whether that's standing in the way anywhere in public if you want to stop to look at your phone, move aside. Unless you're having car issues, don't pull over to the side of the road in rush hour traffic, forcing all the traffic to move to one lane. Pull into the next street. Don't walk across the street while looking at your phone. You are just as responsible for your safety on the road as I am. When in the company of other people, don't start arguing with your partner. It makes things awkward for everyone that is there. Thanks for watching. What stories do you have? Share them in the comments, it will be very interesting to read.